welcome to Comfy Cozy Up. So today is day 26. So I hope you guys had a very happy, fun, um, joyful um, holiday yesterday with your family. I know I did. I had a great time. I actually built a gingerbread house for the first time. It was harder than I thought it was going to be. But nevertheless, I had fun with the kids just building it and going through the frustration and having fun. Um, the food came out so good. So good. So, um, with that out of the way, I got some comfy stuff. Um, pretty much sleeping wear, a bunch of that my mom got me. So I was happy with uh, my gifts. Um, very cozy, you know. I think a lot of my friends thought about me this year saying, okay, she needs to be comfy and cozy because that's the theme for what a lot of the gifts that I got. So with that said, I wanted to say day two, a journal mood, and today word of the day is benefit. So I hope you guys have the calendar. If not, I will remind you in these videos what's the word of the day. So anyway, so I am going to be talking about a genre that I have been reading a lot of in the last four years. Um, and this year was no different. I read a total of 14 classics this year. Um, we're talking Victorian as well as modern classic and I was able to squeeze squeeze a Caribbean in there so I was excited for that. Um, a lot of these I've talked about quite in you know, about a good amount of this um, was in the second half of the year. Um, one author I've read two books from, um, no two authors is two books on the list. Um, so they're not going to be in order but I will put the publication date so you get an idea of the time. Um, so we have Howard's End, E.M. Farsa, that was the first book I read from the, the author. I did a video on it. So a lot of these I will probably put like a, a, a video log if you want to go see any of the reviews that I did. Um, but this was my introduction to E.M. Farsa and I knew I wanted to read more from the author. Although his, his, his books on women can be a, a bit questionable but Nevertheless, I do still like his storyline, so I was here for him. Um, he is right outside of the Victorian era, so didn't quite fit in the era, but he's right outside of it. Then I've read one of my favorite books this year, which is David Copperfield um, by Charles Dickens. You guys know I'm a big Charles Dickens fan. This is the 10th Charles Dickens book that I have read. I now own an additional I uh, believe three um, that I haven't read yet so that is going to be for next year but I'm a Dickens girl I do love his books uh, I find him very interested I find him very much um, great on storytelling um, also give you a bit of, of the era of how people thought how children were, were treated um, how family uh, tides are and in this one I like that the fact that it, it focused a lot on the chosen family and I really appreciated that for this and the, the movie adaptation that I did for this was an A. Love the movie adaptation for this. Then we have the only Harlem Renaissance which was the only disappointment I had for my classic. I read 14 I was very happy with that but I was very disappointed that I did not read only but one Harlem Renaissance and I have quite a few on my bookshelf that I need to get to but we're gonna make up for that next year I need to get at least three or four more off the shelf um, what I left on the shelf I think I want I want to say I have five Harlem Renaissance that I own that I haven't read yet but there's still more than what I own that I need to get to because I do want to finish the series then I that was Plum Bum, sorry. Plum Bum by um, Jesse Redmond Foss, um, Fawcett. And you guys know she is the queen of Harlem Renaissance era. She's the one that put a lot of people on, a lot of our greats. She's the one that helped their career. Um, and she did a good job with this one. I also thought this one was a good one that really have the ending that I like when you think of um, racial t um, issues passing, all that other stuff. She did a good job on ending it where 
um, I think the average reader will be satisfied on there's no open ending in this it's, she got to where she needs to get <laughs> all right then we are back with the Victorian and that is the mayor of Castlebridge and this is my first Tom Hardy and this one I felt was a bit sad <laughs> this is the 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 uh, a great story of someone being their own their own destruction their own demise and creating that and I enjoyed this one but I just thought it was sad I did a video on talk about it in um, a video a full reading vlog so I would definitely leave that then we have a Caribbean I was like yes I have a Caribbean classic on the list and that is Black Shack Alley and Joseph Zorbel now I did the movie adaptation and I told you guys if do not do not they completely cut out chunk of this book and they eliminated an important character in the movie so the movie was a was a bus but the book was absolutely great I think it's just a really good coming of age classic that you will definitely um, enjoy and the writing is good it is a translated piece and I haven't had any issue and so far when I asked the question no one really had an issue who read it in French or have thought that the English adaptation was fine. I enjoyed it. It was a really good classic. Highly recommend it. So the next one is Tell Me How Long the Train Been Gone. Then this is James Bowen, the first of the, the two. I've read two James Bowen. And this was the book that gave me that moment where I realized how much I love this man writing. I think of his book as a puzzle sometimes, as a, that deep thought process that you have to go through in order to really grasp what he's trying to explain to you, what he's trying to tell, what lessons, what metaphors is in this book. And this book is one of those where I, you see the emotion of a character, you see the, the, what drives, what, what makes people do certain things. and. I was so like captivated by the words and the storyline in this book that I felt like if you would have asked me today who was my favorite author, I would have to say James Baldwin. I don't think I've ever felt like this about any other person's writing that I've read this much book. Now there's authors that they will have that amazing book that I love that I will always treasure but they don't have any more. This is an author where I've had so many books from him that I feel this way about that I'm like, yeah, he, he's solid an author through and through. Um, you know, he's up there. He's he's just that kind of person that, um, that will really um, stir your emotion. Stir your emotion. <laughs> so I was like, this is one of my favorite. Absolutely love that book. Then we have another E.M. Forrester, which is A Room with a View. And this is another case of where I thought, yeah, here go, here go women in them dealing with some mess. And it, it made me question the author, but it also makes me want to read more from the author. I, I like that he's stirring the pot with some of his, with his way how he writes women. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's a bit like sometimes I'm like, but at the same time I'm like, Damn you. What else you got out there I need to read? <laughs> so that's what I feel. Then we have um, some black Victorian, which I was able to get when I read, when I did Victober in October. So this is, um, I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but, um, and this one is a, another coming of age story. Very much brutal of what a young woman has to endure in order to survive and uh, you know becoming a, a domestic servant um, you know not really getting anything out of it beside whatever scrap food and a, a shelter um, but it's it, it's also have um, some um, underlying um, things that's added because of it's believed to be partly um, about the author herself so um, we would never know how true that is but I did enjoy this one I thought it was an actual true novel um, in terms of the first African-American published 
um, this is the first Afri African American female published, but the first African American publisher I'll talk about later um, felt more like nonfiction. This felt like a novel. Then we have one of my favorites of the year as well The Picture of Dorian Gray, Oscar Wilde. Sat on my shelf for years. Years. We're talking, I think I was supposed to read this sometime in high school. I don't, I, I think in my sophomore year. Never read it, but it sat on my shelf for years. Like, had I known that this was going to be that amazing classic that needs to be read, I would have been ready. I didn't realize how I would have loved this. And it's a gothic um, horror, and I don't read that kind of genre. But this one was absolutely good. Recommended. Again, all of these, I did a full review, so if you want to know more, just click, go to the description, and I will put listed there, and you can check it out. Then we have the other, the, this is the first um, African American uh, um, published author that is known, and that is Claulette, Claulette, the President's Daughter, and uh, William Wells Brown, I thought his own personal story is fascinating. Um, he was a runaway slave and how he was able to learn how to read and to even write and to, to publish stories like this. Amazing. His, his storyline itself. So of course he took inspiration from his own experience to tell this story. Especially since his slave owner was also heavily in the church, was a reverend. And so in this you get a lot of historical content that is facts. You, you get court cases as well that is mentioned in here as well, real court case that you can look up. Um, so when I was reading this, it was supposed to be more of a fiction, but there's so much in this that is not, that it felt very much non-fiction. Um, the, the main character is is um, portrayed and was inspired by uh, Jefferson's daughter that he had with Sally. Um, so there's that information that is known that he took some of, but there's that explanation of how relatable it was he, did he even know her that well because of where he was as a slave, that kind of deal. Um, so there's a lot of this book that I feel like when you read it, it you won't feel so much of a novel but not fiction, but nevertheless, you're going to be fascinated by some of the things that, um, bitter, some of the things that are bitter where you're talking how heavy um, the all, when I do say all, all the religious institution in this country, in the U.S., own slave at some point. Some, of course, were owned way more than others, but they all did, and there's records to show that they did. Um, so that is another, you know, interesting tale um, when you when you read this book. And then you have another James Baldwin going to see the man. And this is a short story collection that the, the title short story will punch you real hard. It will punch you real hard. James Baldwin absolutely was just a phenomenal writer and how he can tell a story that literally can take your, your, your emotion there. And he did that in this short story collection. Um, there's a lot of family uh, turmoil, that's, you know, things that happen in this where uh, your brother's keeper kind of deal and protection and all that stuff that goes on in the short story collection as well but it, it does show that it's the era the 60s the 50s that that's his that's the era he wrote in and that's the era that these books were published in so it's going to be a little bit more raw and and really stir some you know stir some emotion in this then we have Animal Farm George Orwell Another book that I did not realize I needed to read, that I was going to find absolutely well done. Absolutely well done. And I think this is the book that oftentimes they will uh, give to students. And at the age that this book would have been given to me, I would have never grasped the concept. I would have never got how powerful this book was. And the, you know just the metaphor of the story as as is I would have never understood it it would have went totally over my head so I see why oftentimes with people when you ask them about this book they were younger 
absolutely not this they wouldn't get it um, unless someone dissected for them and even then they still wouldn't have been able to really um, get it fully um, and I think this is a book as an adult if you read it you will understand it it is so relatable to now even though it was written back in 1945 it is so so relatable to now there's so many ways you can really dissect this book and realize how adult the mind works the influence work politics it's just masterpiece he, he gets all five stars for this one <laughs> then we have sounder and sounder I read because I was doing um, a, a movie, a movie. I wanted to celebrate it. A, a, a movie to celebrate um, um, Cicely Tyson. Sorry, and the movie that was done for Sander is the book, is the movie that she got her Oscar nomination for. So rightfully so, I said, "Ooh," but then I thought about it. Why not read the book, then watch the movie? Um, and that's what I did and this was back I think in February um, and I, I absolutely think she was phenomenal in the movie however this is another case of there was a lot of additional things added in the movie that's not in the book there's a lot of things that stirred the pot and have people feeling a certain way about the author because if you know Sounder is based on a black family but it was written by a white man so there's that idea of people who did not read the book but watch the movie and assuming but he did not write the, the screenplay for the movie the screenplay was done by a black man so it was absolutely crazy when you think of the background story of all the controversy over the movie and the things that people felt and not realizing that maybe you should have read the book <laughs> because the, the movie really straight it's straight from the book. Um, nevertheless, the acting was absolutely phenomenal. I wish they would have stick to the book in the movie. I just really wish they would have. That's my only complaint. And then the last um, book is the most recent one I read, I think, in November. And that is The Pearl and a Stein Beck. Now, this is my second book from him. And again, he still has this ability to make me really contemplate on a lot of things that he writes after I finish reading. This is the author also that when you close the book, you're still thinking about certain situation in the book. He's still trying to analyze certain things um, because, it, again, he still has these metaphors that he sneak into his book that it's not just as face value. You still have to like kind of think about it. So I see why this is also an academic book um, because of that. Loved it. Loved the cover that I had. It was just perfect for the storyline. And this one again, I did a, a review on. So overall, I'm okay with it. Um, you know, I so far on here it says five Victorian and nine modern classics so and they range all over because even the modern classics you do the, the old the, the newer ones will be like the one from 1968 and that's a bow win but we have um, 1908 so um, yeah so for the most part it, it is a very good collection of short um sorry classics that i was able to to read this year and can't be mad about it can't be mad about it i didn't hate any of them and that's a good sign <laughs> none i hate none bored me to death thank god for that there's only one that i did not get to and that was the elizabeth gaskell book that i don't have it, a copy of but i think i'm going to pick one up so I definitely want to read that for next year and then there's a uh, several movies for that one so I might do a book to movie adaptation for that one but yeah so this was my my layout guys <laughs> and so yeah so let me know if you read any classic this year what was it and if you read several classics 
what was your favorite I would love to know what kind of classics you guys are reading that I didn't have on this list especially that I can add to my TBR for next year because I really enjoy that this year I had to do research to find some books especially when I found the African American ones and the Caribbean one because I was June Kruber thought I was on a mission to find a classic that was um, Caribbean and I was able to do that so let me know I you know I, I really think there's so much classic out there that is fascinated that I know I would enjoy so I'm open to people giving me recommendation and I can put it in my book for next year and we can see how I'll, how I like it so all right guys so I will see you in the next video which is tomorrow come on back and thanks for watching guys